The Professors is brought to you by Blackboarder.com. On the site shop, you'll find some of the lowest prices on Worldwide Booster Boxes and the oft too expensive singles, as well as over a dozen of the top content producers, if I do say so myself, on the Magic Net. So go check out Blackboarder.com today. Every day is like my eyeballs, like I replay, replay. Charlie's got the melody in my head that I can't keep on coming singing like. Every day is like my eyeballs, like I replay, replay. Charlie's got the melody in my head that I can't keep on coming Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another episode of The Professors. This week, Worldwake has made its full entrance and I've had a week to play and test Worldwake in draft, sealed, and extended for the upcoming PTQ season. So we'll discuss my notable finishes at the pre-release in draft and sealed, as well as local genius Nick Desmaris' extended brew. So let's draw. Shardies like a melody in my head that I can't keep on, got me singing like... Playing the pre-release is kind of like relearning magic, but in a competitive atmosphere. And relearning magic in a competitive atmosphere is like when you're an ultra-competitive World of Warcraft player. And the new expansion just came out. You've been waiting outside the GameStop for two days, except there's only one copy inside. So you'll have to fight against what I'm stereotyping as the agonizingly smelly crowd of nerds who have been sitting at their computers too long, you know, as opposed to sitting at the card game table and slinging cards for too long, to reach that box. Anyway, some players are slow on the uptake and need hours to fully figure out how their multicolor mana bases work, while others pick up on the play faster. Some people are nice and remind you that Um Nom Nom lets you keep green mana in your pool between phases and turns. Others are less relenting and don't remind you that your 4-4 Bajuka Brigand with a Basilisk Collar can't block your team of 3-3s until they pass. And sometimes both sides just forget who gets the tokens from Terastodon and end the game in a more one-sided manner than necessary. Observing my finishes from two weekends ago, I'd say that reading over the spoiler the night before helps you majorly, but otherwise, sometimes you get there with essentially just luck. For sealed, let's take a look at my pool. Shardies like a melody in my head that I can't keep on, got me singing like Na 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 na, every day is like my eyeballs stuck on replay, replay Shardies like a melody in my head that I can't keep on, got me singing like Na 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 na, every day is like my eyeballs stuck on replay <laughs> So with so many heavy beaters, green was the obvious choice. It had an excellent curve when I first counted out playables, there were 22 green cards and artifacts that fit in finite places. However, black offered a few cards with consistent power, and despite the triple green casting cost of Leatherback Bailoth and necessity to maintain large amounts of green mana with Omnath, this sealed format necessitates, you know, actual removal. My black spells offered three fine quick removal spells. As for the leftovers, Crypt Ripper was over the top. And while I considered Splashing Red for a Smoldering Spires or two, the best common land in the set in Limited, and a Stone Idol Trap, it would stretch the base too thin. Overall, the deck building was simple, and thus the play was simple. The round I lost was Game 3 to Sparky when I controlled a Leatherback Bailoth and him a 5-5 with Trample and Adventuring Gear. When I was at 12, it was his turn, and he spent roughly a minute pondering a way to kill me. But I didn't realize till it was too late. He attacked for 5, so not wanting to lose my creature, I didn't block. Problem was, he then played a Harrow from hand, making his 5-5 a 9-9, and flicked out a Searing Blaze for the win. Oddly enough, we found out after the game that if I had blocks, I would have won. As for my first place draft, this made me realize the new power of green. In Zendikar, per usual, green had the not enough removal problem. However, in this format, it's fast enough to power through for the win easy. Leatherback, Bailoth, Beast, Geo Menace, and Terastodon are three excellent examples of cards that change your draft drastically none of which I was sent. Nope, instead I got through the draft with a singleton bomb card, if you can call it that, which was strength, and stable plays throughout the games. Surprisingly enough, this meant putting together mediocre cards like Gnarled Pack, Vastwood Gorger, and Quest for the Gemblades. But hey, when green is coming your way and only two other people at the 11 person table are playing it, having your set curve of the optimal X1 drops, X2 drops, and X3 drops with only six different cards and multiples of three and four, you get a consistent, effective beatdown. Even if that meant playing six mountains for two random three twos, don't underestimate the power of vanilla. Let's take a look at the list. Shardies like a melody in my head that I can't keep on, got me singing like Na 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 na, every day is like my eyeballs, like what we play, we play Shardies like a melody in my head that I can't keep on, got me singing like Na 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 na, every day is like my eyeballs, like what we play, we play
When you draw the opening hand with three lands, a Grey Pelt Hunter, Explore, Arbor Elf, and an Arlet Pack with two quests for the Gem Blades in your deck, you can remain confident enough after three draws on the play that you can trustfully draw a quest and then go first turn Arbor Elf, second turn Explore into quest for the Gem Blades, third turn Grey Pelt Hunter, and block and pop the quest to get a 7-7 Trampler on turn three. Even if it took four cards, it's pretty good. Aside from that, I do need to say that I got a little lucky. What can I say? It happens. In the first round, my opponent got mana flooded. In the second round, neither of us drew anything. In the third round, in the first game, he got mana screwed. Then he won. Then got mana flooded. And in the fourth round, I offered my opponent the draw because I didn't think I could win. But, of course... Optimistic players who really want to improve their game view magic as a game of pure strategy, a game of untarnishable statistic calculations. As the upcoming PTQ seasons format, there have been some advances in decks online with the release of Worldwake. In Zoo, Lone Lion is replacing Curd Ape. Bant's trying but failing to slot Stoneforge Mystic into their deck for the sake of searching out Umizawa's Jite, and others are attempting to add Terastodon as a reanimation target that destroys everything. But being that the already obscured Marin Carve Cocktail decks can play on Iona to more precisely prevent your opponents from doing, well, anything, it's subpar. Where Terastodon lets you destroy three of their six lands in the late game, Iona lets you deny them ten of their twenty remaining spells. But what list would I play in Extended right now? Well, the show's resident deck designer, Nick Desmaris, has brewed up a mix of the usual blue-black control slash sort of a meek Thopter Foundry deck and The Rock. You get to play cards that disrupt their hand, like Thoughtseize and Vendillion Click, their field with Sword of the Meek and Thopter Foundry, and their stack with Muddle the Mixture and Cryptic Commands, while giving you card advantage to win with Threads of Disloyalty and Dark Confidant. Oh, and it also has copies of the $90 Termogoyf, which is to say, it's like a Sword of the Meek Thopter Foundry deck, except better, because Termogoyf is one of the only monsters that can attack with more power than your opponent has creatures. And that's saying something for the Mirror Match when they're paying one mana for each creature after turn two. And said creatures don't even take up slots. So let's take a look at this list. But even with the beatdown of Termogoyf, how does the list compare to the pure blue black version? Nick assures me continuously that it is more stable, better against the blue black list, and has more of the mid range style necessary to beat decks like Zoo. On one hand, the blue black deck offers the double combo of Dark Depths plus Hex Mage with Sword of the Meek and Thopter Foundry. On the other, Nick's list can steal Dark Depths easily. And yet the numbers of the blue black list appear more stable. Is this because it's had more exposure or it's just better? Let us know your opinion in the comments. We'll get into the details and economics of playing the deck of your choice next week as I begin my conquest to get that plane ticket for Pro Tour San Juan. So until next time, this is Anthony Palmario. On behalf of the professors, we're tapped out for now, but we'll untap soon. I the we play, we play.